um, safer internet centers um, are um, funded uh, by the European um, Commission and I do hope that um, our colleague from the Commission is able to join us later on as well. Um, safer internet centers are operating um, in all the um, EU member states plus um, Norway um, and Iceland and also third countries um, where um, now uh, the UK um, also uh, belongs to. Um, it's really nice today, as I said, that I'm joined by different colleagues from the different safer internet centers to share more of the important work that they are doing within Europe, but also um, more globally. As you can see here, hopefully on the screen, safer internet centers are composed of um, three different strengths, um, which is the national awareness knot, um, focusing on raising awareness and understanding um, of safer internet issues and emerging trends. Um, they run various campaigns to empower children and young people. Um, most of you um, might be familiar with Safer Internet Day, which is a global campaign that has been celebrated uh, for um, almost 20 years globally. Um, so this is one of our campaigns where we have gone global, where we try as much as possible to connect um, from, uh, to connect like-minded organizations from um, around the world. We also, um, Safer Internet Centers also consists of um, helplines, which provide information and advice to citizens, uh, mostly children and young people, but also adults, parents and teachers. Um, they're really um, a first-hand service if um, users are concerned about various different, also sensitive topics. You can see here on the slides um, challenges, including, for example, cyberbullying and sexting. And then the third strength is um, hotlines, um, which um, is um, mostly dealing, hotlines are mostly dealing with child sexual abuse material, um, with things circulating um, in the darknet. They're working very closely with law enforcement. And as I said at the beginning, they're coordinated by our partners um, in HOPE. And then last but not least, also an important, um, an important um, and fundamental part of the work that the Safer Internet Centers are doing also includes working directly with children and young people. So youth participation is a very, very important um, component. Um, also in the recently launched Better Internet for Kids Plus strategy that was um, endorsed by the Euro European Commission this May, youth participation should really be put in the front line of the work um, stakeholders are doing um, in order to ensure a safer and better internet for children and young people. It's really important to include um, young people as much as possible also in policy making processes and also from an early stage on in decision making processes. Um, this is why most of our safer internet centers are also very active they have their own national youth panels. They're working directly with children and young people at national level. And we also give them an opportunity once per year to connect um, at a more international and European um, level. Um, the coordination of the Safer Internet um, Centers, the InSafe Network, is also summarized in the Better Internet for Kids portal. Um, a one-stop shop um, for everything um, uh, around online safety, uh, media literacy, education. Um, it's a, a, a portal that is um, that you can consult um, under betterinternetforkids.eu. Um, the portal is structured um, in various different ways. Um, as you can see here, there are different entry points on the portal. Uh, depending on which stakeholder group you're representing or which stakeholder group um, you're interested in. It also um, offers a resource gallery um, with nearly 1,000 resources where we showcase resources from the Safer Internet Centers. You will hear um, and learn about some of these resources um, during today's uh, pre-event. Um, it's a public portal. You don't need to use any login to consult these resources. They are free of charge and available also in um, many different languages there. As I said before, um, um, in Safe and in Hope, we are also coordinating the annual Safer Internet Day, a global campaign, a day where we stand together and raise awareness about better internet um, for kids. You can see here on the slide that 
um, the next Safer Internet uh, Day will be celebrated on the 7th um, of February next year. Um, it will also mark the 20th anniversary of this global campaign. I hope you will all join us. Um, if you um, check the Better Internet for Kids portal, you can also find more about more information about Safer Internet Day and who is coordinating um, this campaign within your country. As I said, it's a global campaign. It's not only European based. We have Safer Internet Day committees around the world, organizations that are really active on this day um, to promote activities at national um, at national level um, as well. Um, the portal is an ever growing portal. From our side, we are working every day um, on this portal to add new information, to stay up to date with different trends that circulate on the internet. Um, we provide um, information for different stakeholders, as you can see here, really focusing on practitioners as well, but also on working um, with policymakers, academia, and also um, industry, all together very um, important players when ensuring a safer and better internet um, for children and young people. Um, this um, so far of the introduction to today's pre-event, um, as I said, um, I'm delighted that I'm joined by various colleagues who are working in those national safer internet centers that they have the opportunity to show you and showcase you more about the valuable work they are doing at national level. Um, I also spoke briefly about the newly launched Better Internet for Kids Plus strategy that was just endorsed um, in May. Um, I don't know if our colleague from the European Commission has joined by now, Manuela Marta. If someone um, from my colleagues who are joining online can just let me know if they can see her in the list. I don't think so, Sabrina. Okay, so I think she may have some problems to um, connect, uh, which is really unfortunate because before uh, diving deeper into the work of the Safer Internet Centers, we thought important to also um, give an opportunity to share more about the Better Internet for Kids Plus um, strategy, which is a really important um, um, policy that has been endorsed uh, this May by um, the European Commission, which will shape the work um, we will doing um, and also the Safer Internet Centers um, will be doing um, um, that also um, caters concrete action points um, to different stakeholders how to really implement and take action. As I said before, youth participation um, has been highlighted um, as part of this strategy. Um, very importantly, um, it's uh, something that um, needs to be done, that young people need to be consulted, they need to be involved um, in decision-making processes, or also when, um, for example, new tools and apps are um, designed. Um, I would suggest um, that we maybe wait um, and keep this presentation, if possible, until uh, towards the end, just to see if um, our colleague from the European Commission will manage throughout this pre-event to connect, um, because of course she is very much better placed uh, to run you through um, this um, deck, um, but to not lose any time in the meantime. I would say we start um, with the presentation of our Safer Internet Center representatives. Um, and I've just put, um, this is just going through alphabetical order. Um, so by no means, I'm uh, now in introducing um, Evangelia Tastalaki. She is working at Forth, um, and uh, Forth is the coordinator of the Safer Internet Center in Greece. And um, Evangelia, the floor is yours. and. Um, just let me know when you want me to um, click through the next slide. I can do that for you. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina. Thank you also for the very informative introduction. Well, uh, good morning and good afternoon to all the corners of the world and also to Adisa Ababa. My name is Evangelia Daskalaki and I work for the Greek Safer Internet Center of Forth. Uh, the operations of the Greek uh, SIG started in 2016 under the coordination of the Foundation for Research and Technology, ALAS, which is one of the largest research centers in Greece with well-organized facilities. 
It has a reputation of a top-level research institute worldwide, and its headquarters are in Heraklion, Crete. There are three operational strands, uh, as also Sabrina mentioned before, within the Greek SIG. The first is the awareness strand, which is the Safer Internet for Kids.gr in Greece. Uh, it is operating since uh, 2016. The second is the helpline, helpline.gr, which uh, is operating since 2012. And the third uh, strand is our hotline, safeline.gr, which is uh, the, long, uh, the longest one, the, old, the elder one, which uh, operates since 2003. The helpline of the Greek SIG, helpline.gr, offers support via telephone, email, and chat in cases of harmful content, content and conduct, such as uh, excessive internet use, a bullying, or exposure to inappropriate online content. It uh, primarily addresses minors, uh, parents, and educators, but it can also be consulted by the general public, industry, government, and public services. Then comes safeline.gr, which is a hotline for reporting illegal content and conduct on the internet in Greece. quickly remove illegal online content. Last but not least is the Awareness Center, uh, the Greek Safer Internet Center, Safer Internet for Kids, which is well known and established in Greece and facilitates awareness raising in Greece about internet safety but also security. It has established strategic partnerships too. One such important strategic partnership is the the partnership with the Ministry of Education in Greece, with whose support the center organizes student competitions and conducts national surveys on the online activities of children in Greece. This partnership also allows the center to keep an open communication channel with the public schools. And in addition, the center also receives an official approval from the ministry to teach and promote its uh, materials in the public schools of Greece. Another strategic partnership of the Awareness uh, uh, Center uh, in order to raise awareness in Greece, in Greece is the Ministry of Digital Governance and more specifically the National Cybersecurity Authority in Greece. Together we collaborate in the European Cybersecurity Month campaign of the European Union Agency for Cyber Security, ANISA. We also carry out webinars in high schools and cooperate in the creation of educational materials. Last but not least is that the, uh, is that the Greek SIG is trusted flag or partner of various online platforms such as Google, YouTube, Meta, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and so on and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of awareness raising activities, the center produces and organizes a range of materials and activities as shown in, in this presentation. So we create a material for children, parents, and educators, uh, either it is presentation, leaflets, posters, videos, books, and so on and so forth. Uh, we do capacity building with news articles, newsletters, hot topics in our platform. Uh, we, uh, uh, we create lesson plans, both for educators, but also for students, for all educational levels, and for vulnerable groups. We conduct seminars, webinars, and trainings for students and parents and educators. We have created so far two massive online courses uh, for educators and for students, um, which are um, uploaded in the Open eClass platform of Greece. Um, we conduct national surveys about online trends uh, targeted both to parents but also to students. And uh, we run various social media campaigns and in some of them we also use influencers.
uh, in the last five years, uh, saferinternetworkit.gr has received over 7.5 million page views and 4 million uh, of which were accumulated in the past two years of the pandemic. Uh, the website also received 1.3 million new users this last two years. The quizzes that we have uploaded in our um, platform uh, have been used over 300,000 times. And in addition, we have created 380 videos that have been uploaded, informative videos, of course, that have been uploaded in our channels. Moreover, in 21 and 22, the Awareness Center reached 23,000 pupils through school visits, while through webinars, we have reached 3,000 parents and 9,000 educators. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Safer Internet for Kids created a dedicated web page with tips for e-learning platforms, such as how to stay away from frauds and suggestions for quality time online and positive content. It also offered webinars for educators focused on issues as personal data, data protection during e-learning, intellectual property protection and disinformation online. Uh, moreover, the Greek Center carried out various work targeting vulnerable groups. Some of the highlights of these include webinars in sign language for people with hearing disabilities, webinars for people with uh, and students with ADHD and the internet use, and seminars uh, that were targeted to vulnerable groups like refugees. Being part of fourth, uh, uh, we also conduct national surveys on a yearly basis. This service led to publication of four academic research papers the last years. Next slide, please. Now, when it comes to youth participation, uh, the youth panel of the Greek SIG consists of 27 members across, across the country, and it includes young people from small villages, from islands, but also uh, from large cities, thus drawing a very comprehensive picture of the country. The youth panel also produced a range of videos on various topics, such as disinformation, body positivity, as well as videos to encourage talking about various online experiences with trusted adults. The youth panel also supported the center with the creation of leaflets uh, targeting their peers, covering topics such as internet use during the pandemic and body image and influencers online. At an international level, the Greek youth panelists have participated in various activities, such as Big Youth Panel, the Internet Governance Forum from 2019 up until today, 2022, the Youth Summit and the AI uh, and Children's Rights Workshop organized by the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, among others. Thank you very much. Uh, this was a small presentation of the Greek Safer Internet Center. Thank you um, so much, Evangelia, for um, your presentation. I suggest that um, we move ahead um, with our next presentation, which is coming. Um, we're moving now from Greece um, to Malta. Um, I welcome uh, Deborah Valasso. Um, she is um, working for the emergency one call Be Smart Online, which is part of the Maltese Safer Internet Center. Deborah, I hope um, you can hear me. The floor is yours. And uh, again, please do let me know when I should move the slide. Deborah, are you still with us? Good morning. Yes. Hello, Sabrina. Thank you. Are you hearing me? OK. So good morning, um, I'm Deborah um, from the Be Smart Online, um, which is a consortium made of different partners as the other Safer Internet Centers. Um, we are also co-funded by the European Union and the lead partner um, Next 
slide is um, Sabrina, the lead partner of our Safer Internet Center is the Foundation for Social Welfare Services, which is a, um, a foundation um, for child protection mainly, and among obviously the services offered by child protection, we also incorporate um, child online protection. Then we have partners such as the Office of the Commissioner for Children, the Ministry of, of Education, and also um, the Malta Police Force, specifically the cyber crime, the cyber crime unit. Um, the strength of this consortium is the collaboration. We've been operating um, uh, since the past, for the past 12 years. Um, uh, the, uh, we all have different roles, mainly the Foundation for Social Welfare Services takes care of the Safer Internet Center, the helpline and the hotline. The Office of the Commissioner for Children is more uh, specifically on, uh, organizes the youth panelists and, and, uh, and works with the youth ambassadors. And with the Malta Police Force, we work particularly with the Child Web Alert Hotline for the illegal content. So we have this memorandum of understanding with the Cyber Crime Unit in order to be able to analyze the illegal content. And with the Ministry of Education, we have um, this collaboration since they are the ones who produce um, resources to schools, mainly in the psychosocial subjects, which is a subject which is offered to all students in Malta and Goto, whereby um, we also have um, included the topic of online safety. And according to the different ages of the children, they receive different information. So for example, for the younger kids, you have digital citizenship and, and information about respect and, and cyberbullying. For the, for the older children, you have sessions on uh, sexting and, and protecting oneself online, etc. Next slide. As I have mentioned, um, we also do a lot of work with the young people, especially for Safer Internet Day. In fact, um, the last Safer Internet Day, last February, we have um, the video that we have produced for, for the actual day was um, produced along with, with the young people. And it was one of our youth panelists who actually um, edited and, and uh, produced the video at the end. Um, the end product was made by one of, of our young panelists. So we give a lot of uh, importance to, to the young people in our, in our consortium. And also when we create resources or awareness campaigns, we um, specifically uh, ask them for uh, what they're encountering in their environment. So if there's particular trend going on, if uh, they have any ideas on the type of resources that might be more appealing to to young people or, or to people their age. So it, um, for us, the, the young people are, are very, very important. Next slide, please. Um, for As for the helpline, it, our internet helpline is incorporated in our generic helpline, so which um, goes by the number of 179, but it is also connected to the child helpline, which is the 116111. Being a generic helpline, um, we get about 16,000 calls per year. Obviously, these are not calls related to the internet or to online, online abuse, because anyone um, around the island can phone on this number for uh, all, all kind of support. So they might be calling for domestic violence, child protection, mental health, all types of problems. We have incorporated the online safety course since 2010. And um, there was also a very important um, milestone with, with the support line because it used to be operated by volunteers. But since the, for the past four years, we have employed staff who are um, working on shifts and, and the support line is being offered 24 hours a day um, with paid, uh, uh, with employed, employed staff. We have seen a very, um, it, this was a very positive move that our agency did because even the, the, the people are more committed. Um, we can offer them training, we can invest in our operators. And even when it comes to online safety calls, 
we can um, constantly update them about what is going on and uh, um, from there then we receive um, we get the internet related calls next slide please just a few statistics from the past past years um, uh, obviously being a small island for us having more than se almost 700 calls and um, which are online related is very important but apart from this being that we are a small island and distances are not such a big deal for uh, no, no, not a big deal for us um, we also offer one-to-one -one sessions to those who would like further support. So we invite them to, to our offices and we help them with um, situations, for example, of cyberbullying. We help them to keep the evidence if there are instances where they need to follow it up with a police report. We, we support them in that. So it's um, for us, apart from the um, online, apart from the calls that we receive um, by phone, we also offer one-to-one -one support in person to those who, um, who would like it, would like to receive it. Next slide, please. As the globe, um, globally, I think, and this reflected also in our um, helpline, cyberbullying was one of the top um, problems that that uh, we received the, the calls mainly 30 percent of our calls related to online safety were on cyberbullying and uh, um, this has um, taught us a lot this has uh, influenced also the type of awareness campaigns that we're doing um, we are trying to focus more on cyberbullying and also on encouraging children to respect one another on being empathic on on um, being in, in the other person's shoe, how like raising awareness about how would you feel if you are being bullied, how would you feel if someone that you know is being bullied or, or, or your sister or your brother. So even the kind of awareness um, is focusing more on, on, on cyberbullying since we are seeing that even from a younger age, um, children are, are using um, online means to, to bully others. Next slide. Next slide, please. I would like to share with you one of our um, awareness campaigns, which was this digital detox. It was exactly um, right after everything, all the COVID, the pandemic measures were, were going to be removed. And we encouraged them to do like a digital detox since we were receiving many calls from uh, um, uh, also from adults, from parents telling us that the children are spending more time online, etc. So we encourage them to do this digital detox campaign whereby they were, they had a mission every week. It went on for seven weeks and there was this mission where they had to do something offline and then promote it online. Also to encourage some form of positive online, online content. And so, for example, in one mission, they had to draw a cyberbullying poster, a poster against cyberbullying. In another mission, they had to follow a recipe online and then document it to us, um, to us um, via via our social media page. This was very successful. We were, we had aimed to have around thirty thousand reach, but in reality, we got a reach of over fifty thousand. Um, uh, children participated in it and we had also very positive feedback from from the parents who um, told us that it it involved their kids and they were happy about it that it involved both the offline and also also the online and one last thing I would like to mention um, uh, something that we are currently doing next slide Sabrina something that we, we, we are uh, we have collaborated with this um, Maltese band called the travelers um, they have uh, we, we met them they we gave them some case studies and then they came up with the song called simile um, the song is is in Maltese um, it is a song where which uh, the, the basic message is that uh, um, we are all similar, so we need to respect, um, we are not all similar, we need to respect each other's differences and it is easy to stay sitting on your couch and, and uh, judge others by simply moving your, your fingers. 
but you need to understand other people, etc. The video is also very, um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it is very related to, to the message because you have this girl who's um, being cyberbullied and with every message that she is receiving, she's also getting physical scars. Um, uh, and uh, we, we are going to use this this video for our Safer Internet Day um, uh, campaign next 7th February, uh, whereby we'll be doing the school roadshow to initiate the the uh, the subject of cyberbullying with the kids, uh, with, with young people, and and uh, use use the song as well to to uh, for them to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you um, so much, uh, Deborah, for sharing all the work um, that you're doing um, in uh, Malta. And uh, once again, I think a very important and impressive work uh, that you are doing, but also all different safer internet uh, centers are doing across Europe um, and um, beyond. Uh, we continue our journey and um, I'm also happy to welcome and actually I'm handing over now to um, Adisa Baba um, because our colleagues uh, Julia and um, Anna are with you on site in the room. Um, they um, will uh, showcase the work they're doing um, in Poland. As mentioned before, they are representing NAST uh, who is coordinating the Polish Safer Internet Centers. Um, I hope uh, Julia and Anna you can hear me and it's very good to see you um, on site representing um, InSafe um, in Addis Ababa. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Is this working? Yeah, I think so. Yes, okay. So, hello, uh, Sabina, if you can hear you and uh, good afternoon. To we can I can hear you very quietly. Is it true? But I'm sure okay. that's fine. Okay, now it will be better. And yeah. uh, yes, good afternoon from Addis Ababa. Uh, we are really happy to be here on site and to be a part of IGF in Ethiopia and also to represent InSafe Network as a Polish Safer Internet Center is a, uh, really an honor for us. And uh, yes, because Sabrina and our uh, online uh, participant can't uh, hear you and can, uh, can't see you, uh, if there will be any questions or comments, we are really happy uh, to gather it questions to us or to, to our uh, colleagues. Okay, now it's our time to present. It's so great to be here, uh, both with our friends from the Insight Network, but especially here with the people on site. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Sabrina and the others, uh, if you can really see the room, but we have very high participation here, so thank you, thank you so much. Um, Especially we are very happy because we feel this as an occasion to have lots of different partnership afterwards because this is why we come here to, to come back with, some with friends from Ethiopia, with friends from all over the world because there are many, many options to cooperate uh, in frames of Safer Internet Plus program, uh, in frames of the Digital Europe program uh, and in frames of such a huge event like a Safer Internet Day. Just if you could let me know, do you know the action, the Safer Internet Day? Maybe any of you organized already in your countries? That's the event that is approaching. It will come in February. So really, really feel very warmly invited to, to join this effort because it's an all over, all over world effort to pay attention to kids' safety uh, online. Um, our colleagues already described a little bit the, the centers and we work very similarly. This is the strength actually of the network that we try to deliver the same services in uh, all the European Union. We joined in Poland, we joined the, mm, the InSafe network as soon as we could after we joined the European Union in 2004. We joined in 2005. We started cooperation with the InSafe network because as you all know, internet has no borders. So it's really so, so difficult to, to work on kids and young people's safety if we don't uh, cooperate internationally. So we were so happy to be able to join. And we, of course, deliver all those main services that the network is delivering. So we have, maybe, uh, Sabrina, if you could uh, sh share the slides. Unfortunately, someone um, <laughs> took away the rights for me to do that. Uh, okay. uh, so if organizers could please uh, give me back the rights. <laughs> so I, I will speak and maybe some, somewhere in between the slides will appear again. Yeah. 
Yes, yes for sure. Yeah. So we deliver all those main uh, services. We have hotline dealing with illegal content, uh, especially with the child sexual abuse materials, uh, but also racism, xenophobia, so those illegal contents uh, that we have in Poland, but as well the content that is not appropriate for children. Uh, and it operates at NASC, so we work as Polish Safer Internet Center, consists of two organizations. There is a research institute, National Research Institute NASC, and we represent NASC and some more colleagues that are with us. And also uh, in the consortium we have NGO, so no no non-governmental organization, Empowering Children Foundation. And as we have, the, uh, we together do the awareness part, we do all those educational materials. And then uh, at NASC we have hotline dealing with the illegal content and in the foundation we have helplines. And what is really, really important and what we are very happy about also that our helplines, we have two helplines, we have a helpline for uh, children and young people, it's, um, 116, 111, and then uh, 800, 100, 100 for adults, so for parents, teachers who have some problems, mm, challenges with the internet uh, threats, and it they operate uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, what, what which is very, very important for us because we feel we can really, really come with help for children. And also we give opportunity to come uh, offline, because not, as you know, not all parents, not all teachers are like okay with uh, dealing with the such issues only online. So we also give them opportunity to come and to talk about their problems, about kids' problems. Uh, this number of helpline is, of course, uh, this most important number for the cyberbullying. Like all over the European Union, this 116, 111 is a, this uh, formal telephone number for um, for helpline. Uh, talking about uh, dealing with illegal content, now I would we would like just to share, you know, one um, one issue that is raising uh, in Poland, but also unfortunately all over the world. So we s can see more and more uh, self-generated content. So the materials, pedophile materials, done by children by themselves, but of course children being manipulated by mm, by the adults. As all the centers, we cooperate with. Uh, all the most important stakeholders in Poland. So we have advisory board, we meet a few times a year because it's, uh, as, as I said, it's impossible to work only nationally, but it's also, we have, to we have to work internationally, but it's also not possible to work alone. So we have to have a huge alliance of, of partners and we try to cooperate with everybody who is also like us willing to, to have kids safe mm, uh, in the network. Uh, so we have all those biggest companies like TikTok, Google, uh, uh, Meta, but we also cooperate a lot with the government because it's also so, so much important to have one voice talking about the, the regulations and new policies that we are now very, very strong uh, involved in Poland to change also from this um, legal point of view. And uh, we were asked actually to, to choose, like to pick one topic that we'd like to especially share with you because we all have only 10 minutes uh, for, the, for the center. So we wanted to focus on the youth empowerment, something that is so much aligned with the new strategy, Better, inter better Internet for Kids Plus. Uh, we want not only to uh, make kids safe, but also to empower them, to make them feel really, really involved. And now I must say that today in the morning there was absolutely fantastic youth uh, summit meeting. There is Emilia, she's a coordinator of uh, youth IGF uh, in Poland and very active here. So this young, young voice must be heard. Of young adults, but also of those teenagers, and we would like now to focus on those teenagers that we cooperate with, and just to share with you some ideas how we uh, work with them. Uh, yes, Sabina, can you uh, give us the next slide? Yes. So, as Anya said, we do like really a, a, a broad range of activities. So now I'll present you only one. So uh, that that refers to uh, empower em empowerment and involvement of young people. And uh, when we are talking about uh, this, uh, uh, this activity, uh, it is worth uh, mentioning, especially our youth panel that was established uh, in uh, 2010. Uh, so it's I it is, uh, I it is mm, older than 10 years now. And uh, uh, at the moment we have uh, uh, young people from uh, 12 uh, schools from across country 
and this is a kind of uh, platform of communication for, for young people. We uh, meet regularly to discuss with them uh, their experience, their needs, their fears and habits. Uh, expectations they have online. We discuss with them uh, emerging trends uh, to really know what is now uh, in the agenda. And uh, and uh, actually uh, we try to involve them also uh, in selected activities that we are undertaking nationally or internationally. For example, uh, they are they are part of our uh, Safe Internet Day uh, conference. They took uh, part. Uh, they take part in our uh, discussion panels. Uh, they took part in our uh, international conference that is organized uh, uh, annually in Poland. Uh, for example, this year our young uh, um, panelists took par part also in uh, Brussels in Safe Internet uh, Forum, which is a very important annual event that is organized uh, for uh, key stakeholders to discuss uh, children's safety online and, and solutions to, to, to make internet a better place for children and young people. Uh, we discuss with our young panelists also our educational materials, activities that are, uh, that are um, addressed to their peers, uh, also media campaigns to uh, prepare them in really authentic way. And, and what else? Um, actually, the idea of, uh, of this youth panel is not, wor is not only to work uh, during our meetings, but also to multiply uh, the efforts on uh, local levels. So our young ambassadors, young panelists, can come back to their uh, communities to their schools and uh, to be ambassadors of these issues locally at their schools and um, yes next slide please and another very important and i think inspiring activity is uh, digital youth forum which is uh, organized within our center by, by our partners so uh, empowering children foundation this is a conference that has been organized since 2016 for young people. Uh, so uh, this year it was organized in June. And um, the idea and aim of this activity is to inspire young people uh, uh, in the field of uh, creative and safe uh, use of new technologies. So among uh, uh, speakers there are mainly young people, young activists, young influencers, young developers that uh, owe their success and uh, popularity uh, to their activities online. And uh, for example, sometimes there are really, really inspiring stories. We had uh, young people that presented a very difficult situations um, from their life. For example, uh, they struggle to overcome cancer or uh, anorexia or depression. And somehow new technologies and their creativity and activity online became a way to tame uh, their disease. And uh, during uh, Digital Youth Forum, we try to um, provide uh, high accessibility. What does it mean? Uh, so each, each conference is, uh, during each conference, we provide uh, mm, translation into sign language. Also this year, during uh, due to um, the war in Ukraine and the fact that uh, almost four million uh, war refugees from Ukraine uh, crossed Polish borders. Uh, also, the conference was also, uh, also uh, translated into Ukrainian. And actually, um, young people from 81 um, school classes from uh, Ukraine took part in this activity because it was recorded online. It was um, the, the transmission, online transmission was also provided. And um, also during this activity, we try to provide um, equality. So among young speakers, we have also young ambassadors that support uh, diversity among, uh, among their peers. And this year, this conference was participated by uh, almost 400 young people on site and uh, 6,000 people uh, online. Uh, and among these people were also uh, young people from Ukraine and, uh, of course, uh, 
more than one, uh, 160 uh, school classes uh, from uh, Polish schools. And yes, next slide. Okay, and now we uh, just for the end, we'd like to share also one educational initiative, initiative that we've we done with children, with their involvement of our youth panel and dedicated for uh, young people. So we asked in spring uh, our youth panel when we had a meeting with them, what topics are especially important for them, like what topic they would like to focus on in the coming months, especially this year when there is a young people's year in the European um, uh, commissions, so what they would like to be focused, and they came with us with those topics, so they would like to know something more about the relations, how to cope with the online and offline the world, they have all the groups of the messengers, they have many conflicts that comes from online life to the offline life, so how to manage this uh, life division that they have. Then they wanted to know how to play safely, how not to get addicted, but in the same time really be a gamer, because th of course they are gamers. Uh, they wanted to know how to be a uh, really creative online because we sometimes we all think like it's kind of a stereotype that all young people are so creative online but not really there is really really a low percentage of young people who really create something really are authors not just the receivers of the of the uh, network content so how to be creative but also in a legal way uh, then uh, they want to know more about the dar dark aspects of the network and here uh, especially NASC, like we have a computer emergency response team working at NASC, so we have lots of experts dealing with the security issues. Uh, so we also wanted, of course, to take this topic on um, on board. And they also would like to know how to learn efficiency, so they feel like the technology distracts them, they can't concentrate. So how to be still surrounded by all those smartphones and, and uh, the digital technology, but be able to focus on what they need to be focused, like on the education or some uh, homework they have to do. And these were the topics that they came to us and then we arranged webinars for them and they are actually taking place at the moment. So we did two webinars last week, now they are two and then we have an another two, so um, six uh, different, uh, different meetings and in each we have also a young person uh, being a panelist and, um, and we have an adult expert and a moderator who is the moderating this discussion and we promote it because it's really hard to get to teenagers actually with the educational materials it's something like really a really huge effort so we of course promote it to them but also we promote it to schools so we promote it as an online uh, lesson that the school can take part in uh, especially that these are topics that sometimes are really difficult for teachers to, to take on so uh, they do it as online lesson. It's a 45 minute live webinar, but of course it's recorded so then they can um, always use it also afterwards, not necessarily uh, live. Yeah, so I think these are... Yes, ac actually the last slide with uh, some contacts to us and uh, actually we really invite you to visit our YouTube because we have like a lot of English uh, version of our materials and especially very good uh, presentations and speeches from our international conferences, so it's really worth um, visiting. And uh, thank you. <laughs> I give the floor to uh, to Sabrina. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anna and Julia, for um, your presentation and also for uh, giving us some testimonials um, live from Addis Ababa. It's so unfortunate that uh, we are not able to be there with you uh, in person, um, but. I do hope that in the future um, the Unsafe Network will be fully uh, represented um, on site um, again. We have two more um, presentations for you and we do hope this is really useful for um, colleagues um, being with us um, and uh, be assured that there's also some time at the end for you to, um, to ask us some questions. We'll now uh, move on to uh, Sofia Rascado um, from the uh, Portuguese uh, Safer Internet Center. Sofia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, Sabrina. Uh, good afternoon, Addis Ababa. I hope you can hear me well. As Sabrina mentioned, uh, my name is Sofia Rasgado and I'm the coordinator of the Portuguese Safer Internet Center. And I'm very happy to collaborate in this workshop with all my other colleagues. To start, I would like to give you a brief presentation of our Safer Internet Center. 
We are a consortium built both by public and private organization and coordinated by the National Cybersecurity Center, which complement their work to, towards a safer online ecosystem for all. Our mission is to develop a culture of a safer and health empowering city and to contribute to fight against bad and illegal content available online. This being said, I would like to address the main point of my presentation, which will focus on some of our best practices resources by target group that are available on our website and in the platform Better Internet for Kids and can be downloaded free of charge. Next slide, please, Sabrina. Uh, starting with children, nowadays children grow up surrounded by technology and develop from an early age the ab ability to be online alone. Today, more than ever, it is necessary to alert them to the risks and at the same time make them aware of digital safety. Thus, ZigzagNet podcast was launched in 2019, combining entertainment and education. ZigzagNet podcast is part of the Portuguese public radio online programming, and it was possible due to the direct collaboration between some of the partners of the Portuguese Safer Internet Center Consortium. In February 2022, uh, the, the second season of ZigZag and Annette podcast was launched. Throughout the new 33 episodes of this season, children are given a set of advice that contribute to the development of their digital skills. This new season was launched on the Safer Internet Day, and since February, each month, three new episodes can be heard online. The episodes of the first season were adapted into a book, with 30 illustrations, which tell three different short stories. Over 9,500 copies of the, the printed book were sent to all the school kindergartens and school libraries in Portugal and Ireland. This resource did reach the, uh, to, uh, to, to 22,328 people through social media, and it was downloaded 574 uh, times. This book is a contribution to the development of digital literacy among young children in Portugal, and it has been recognized by the National Reading Plan from the Ministry of Education, meaning that is also available on their website and, and is recommended for uh, teachers to use uh, it in the classroom. Another best resource targeted children are the six episodes of Focus Stories. Once again, with the partnership of the Portuguese radio television, it was possible to launch this series targeting children from three to eight years. It is important to highlight that this series was broadcast in one of the highest audience segments for children and were also aired to Portuguese speaking African countries through the Portuguese radio television for Africa. Next slide. Uh, regarding youngsters, our center in partnership with me and the others programs from the Ministry of Health developed a video game that intends to create a graphic and interactive narrative, meaning that the narrative can be can take different paths according to the decisions of the players at the end of each segment of the story. The new graphic novel created around non-substance addictions and the problematic use of the internet gives the teacher the possibility of using the participants' smartphones to develop individual and group dynamics. The story focuses on the typical process of adolescence, of expanding the social world and increasing the influence of friends, which can jeopardize family dynamics, triggering questions around loyalty to both parties. Throughout the plot, themes such as gaming, gambling, cybersecurity, social media, school dropout, and the answer to the problems resulting from these behaviors are worked on. It is aimed at young people between 12 and 18 years, and in a prevention perspective, it can be played individual or in groups. It can be applied in schools, juvenile association, or even in foster homes for young people. The program has an assessment protocol that involves the application of pre and post questionnaires to the intervention and its comparisons with a control group. 
Last week, during the International Conference Lisbon Addiction, it was made a presentation about new problems, new approach, actions for the case of non-substance addictions for adolescents and young adults, showing the first results of the implementation of this resource. Next slide, please. Uh, re concerning digital parenting, in uh, 2021, we launched the ebook Parents, Children and Technology. Aimed primarily at uh, parents and educators, it is divided into sub-teams uh, and the, the ebook provides in-depth information on childhood and parenting today, growing up with technology, importance of parental mediation, parenting styles on internet use, parental strategies for internet use regulation, tips for parents and children, and how to use our helpline. This uh, uh, resource reached uh, uh, 97,535 people through social media, and it was downloaded more than 3,000 times. Uh, regarding uh, senior citizens, uh, Grandpa uh, Online is an example of a resource that was launched during the COVID-19 conf confinement. It is a mini-series of six episodes that features the adventures of a grandfather and a grandmother and their grandchildren when dealing with the digital world. In an intergenerational inter perspective and based on humor, very well-known Portuguese actors address topics like privacy, social media, hate speech and online dating. This series aims to promote the use of the internet among the senior population in a safe and responsible manner, highlighting the benefits and opportunities that technology offers for uh, their well-being. Next slide. Since, uh, since 2019, the National Cybersecurity Center has made available four massive, massive open online courses, reaching out more than 92,476 people. Each of these, uh, uh, each of them deals with a specific uh, subject regarding cybersecurity. Just to give you an overview, the Cybersecurity Citizen course is intended to all citizens from those who do not have much experience in using the internet to the more experienced ones. Since a recycling of knowledge in cyber hygiene can make the difference when it comes to the internet, which is in a content, constant uh, evolution. The course Consumer CyberSafe provides some tools to do online shopping in a clear and safe way, like identifying if an online shopping website is safe, what is the most appropriate means of payment for a given situation, or what are the customer rights in the European Union. The course Cyber Informed Citizen is aimed at all citizens who consult information online. In this way, it is intended not, no, not only to alert to the dangers of an uncritical consumption of information, but also to share knowledge that helps citizens to verify if the information they consult online is true. The Cyber Social Citizen course was designed based on uh, up-to-date literature and data from recent research and describes the main social media platforms, highlighting the best uh, practice in their use to improve cybersecurity and user privacy. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, last but not least, as Sabrina mentioned on um, uh, uh, one of our activities is the celebration of the Safer Internet Day. And this year, we launched the campaign Logout to Abuse. As we know, online safety is also personal, physical, and emotional safety. So we decided to create an online content to alert about some of the forms of dating violence through social networks. The target audience is teenagers of both genders, since the issue of control as a form of violence is transversal to both gender and sexual orientation. In this sense, it was important to create gender-neutral message. With the support of the Commission for Citizenship and Gender Equality, the Directorate General of Education, Continent Foodshine and the Lisbon Metro, the awareness campaign, which comprised five posters with different message, was disseminated through social media during the month of February 
2022 and made also available in the continent supermarket and also in the carriage of the Lisbon Metro. With this campaign, we estimate to have reached more than 3 million people across uh, the, the, the country. Also for the dissemination of uh, the Safer Internet Day 2022, a, speci a specific landing page was developed on our website that during the month of February had 16,544 views. So next slide, and thank you very much for uh, your attention and please, and, uh, and Sabrina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you um, so very much, Sophia, um, for sharing um, again uh, um, a very uh, impressive and important set of resources and highlighting really the work you and all the other colleagues are doing at national level um, with the different stakeholders and also the resources that they are producing in very also interactive and tangible formats. To remind um, everyone who's listening to this pre-event, you can also find most of these resources on the Better Internet for Kids portal. And then, of course, also um, on the websites um, of um, the different Safer Internet centers. If you uh, log into the IGF community again to read um, the description of our pre-event, you can find links to um, either websites. Um, one final presentation um, before we're really happy to um, open the floor and I see that we have a full uh, room on site. We're really um, looking forward to receiving your question is um, handing over to um, David Wright, um, who works for Southwest Grid for Learning, um, that represents one um, third of the Safer Internet Center in yours. Sabrina, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, and uh, e equally uh, a, a very warm welcome to all of you at the IGF uh, over there in, in Addis Ababa. Um, it's great to be able to participate um, uh, uh, again uh, for, for another year, particularly talking about the InSafe network. Um, uh, but uh, we look forward to next year as well. We'll be there again in person. Next slide, please, uh, Sabrina. So as uh, Sabrina said, uh, I'm David Wright. Uh, I'm CEO of a UK charity and the uh, one of the three directors of the UK uh, Safe Internet Centre. So you've heard some amazing insights uh, to, to some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the national European Safe Internet Centres. Uh, and I'm merely going to, to add that and reflection about some of the activities of, of what is the UK Safe Internet Centre. So, we're a, charity, uh, a partnership of three charities within the UK, uh, and we've been very proud uh, members of the European Safety Net Centre, uh, centres the InSafe Network since 2011. Uh, so now just over a, a decade old, uh, and it has been this, this partnership of three three charities, uh, and we each operate parts of the different or different parts of the network. Uh, we now um, are funded uh, or at least co-funded uh, by the UK Domain Registry in the UK, um, following clearly the, the decisions of the UK and as Sabrina said, um, now uh, no longer a European member state, but we still continue very much to, uh, to participate, to contribute uh, within the uh, InSafe uh, in -safe network. And again, li like all the other European Safe Internet Centres, we have three parts. Next slide please, Sabrina. So the first one, we're going to focus on really here is the awareness center and so we do a whole series of activities um uh, clearly to do with raising awareness within uh, the, within, within and across uh, the four nations that make up the uk these are merely just some of those particular activities and i'm going to start off really with safe internet day and that's obviously the primary purpose that we we engage and we we share uh, information uh, with uh, with the igf and have done uh, since going back uh, to 2011, 2012. So, uh, safer in the day from a UK perspective, um, uh, it is our single day uh, of activity, uh, single day of limelight uh, that we get. Um, and, and so we, we always measure impact in terms of evaluations. Uh, this year, um, 2022, safer in a day, we managed to reach 54% uh, of children within the UK and 38% of uh, of children uh, and then we see some kind of the impact particularly around those children who feel more confident to talk about issues online we measure this as well to do with the most number of supporters this year we were supported by three three thousand four hundred and twenty four different organizations 
In terms of reach and downloads, uh, we had uh, nearly a million views of Saving Her Day films and over 125,000 downloads of the education packs. So all kind of different metrics that we use to measure uh, is Safe Internet Day, and each year for the last decade, it has grown year by year, particularly from uh, from a UK perspective. So we are now well into um, uh, activities uh, for for Safe Internet Day uh, for next uh, next year. Um, and and so uh, I'm going to pick up on a, on a couple of other bits. Uh, project Evolve. Project Evolve is a massive project for us, and it looks at di uh, digital media literacy skills. Um, uh, that um, uh, children sh uh, should have. For too long, we think we focused on the harm and exploitation uh, that, uh, that that children can encounter online, uh, and you know, showing showing children films of, uh, let's say, exploitation, so that if they recognise it, they can perhaps avoid it. But we know realize that you know children don't learn like that so it's much more in the same way that when you learn to drive a car you didn't just merely watch films of car crashes uh, in terms of exploitation that, that happens online clearly it's an important aspect to understand that but not in isolation so what are the skills that each and every age group should have uh, online and so describe that to do with at every age uh, and then provide activities and indeed assessment mechanisms uh, around this as well in terms of awareness raising uh, online safety live is our program now has been running seven years and goes and, and uh, educates professional development uh, around online safety. We've reached over 27,000 uh, teachers uh, across the UK, as well as podcast information too, so uh, podcasts that, we, that we've launched. We've very much supported a peer, peer support education uh, or peer support programs, given that children will invariably uh, only talk to their friends uh, when it comes to when they encounter issues. And so digital leader programs peer mentoring structures, peer support structures, uh, we think are, are really important as well. I'm going to move on now to the, to the next one, please, Sabrina. The second aspect around helplines. And this is actually one of our contributions uh, as SWGFL. So we operate three helplines in, uh, in the UK. We, uh, the first one was launched in 2011, the Professionals Online Safety Helpline. We support those working with children um, uh, around online safety issues. Uh, and again, we've, we've seen a uh, great escalator in terms of, uh, of calls over that particular period. Um, more recently, at the top there, we launched a platform in 2019, reportharmfulcontent.com. So this uh, supports anyone over the age of 13 in, support, in reporting legal but harmful content. Uh, we took seven years to build this particular platform uh, and we'll always encourage uh, people, uh, victims, those experiencing legal but harmful content, to go and report that to the platform. Indeed, that's where there's direction, some help and some confidence that the platform will actually provide. So if you want to report content on Facebook, here's where you do. If you want to report impersonation on Twitter, here's where you go. Um, now, if you've made a report to platforms, but you've got a question, a query, um, uh, or they've perhaps not taken the action you're expecting, you can then submit those details to report harmful content. The team will assess that. And if they think that content should have got removed, then they'll actually make representation and get that content uh, taken down. Uh, and we take action on about 25% of the cases get sent to us. And when we do take action, we're between 89 and 92% takedown rate. So reportharmfulcontent.com. And finally, uh, in this section, I want to just merely look at uh, uh, supporting adults. Uh, in 2015, we uh, the, uh, created and established the world's first helpline support adults who are victims of non-consensual intimate image abuse, the revenge porn helpline. Now, this has had, the, 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 from our perspective, the biggest impact during particular COVID. We've seen doubling of cases year on year for the last three years. In 2019, we had 1,600 cases. Last year, we supported over 4,400 people. Just going through removal of 300,000 images and indeed we've got uh, a workshop uh, tomorrow uh, in fact around about this time tomorrow uh, on this particular subject as well so workshop 71 you're all very welcome to uh, I can't not really plug this could I people uh, please do come along to that workshop uh, workshops 71 uh, the good the bad and the ugly around online uh, gender imbalance we see massive uh, gender imbalance in that case last year we supported 70 or 75 percent of all the people we supported were, were women when we support men on average not point each case has 0.2 images per case when we support women on average it's 12.5 images per case so massive gender imbalance that we see particularly to do with that and we're going to showcase as well tomorrow something called stopncii.org the world's first device side hashing technology to enable uh, victims of those being threatened to post or having their images shared online is actually being able to prevent those images from being shared online uh, so there's a little taste to so come along to the workshop tomorrow to perhaps to find out uh, find out more final slide please sabrina around hotline 
And the hotline, this is operated by the IWF, uh, the Internet Watch Foundation. Uh, again, so uh, like Child Notes and like Internet Watch Foundation and us, we're, we're all between 20 and 25 years old as charities. IWF has, get, again, has seen an escalator in particular uh, uh, reports being made to them. So last year, you can see they received 300, over 360,000 reports from the public uh, that their, uh, their analysts assessed each and every one of those. Of those uh, reports that were made to them, they concluded over a quarter of a million of those reports actually did contain illegal child sex abuse material. So as you can see, a massive increase uh, from, uh, from, from the year before. The big focus at the moment, which their analysts, uh, having looked at each of those images, it is around self-generated or those images being coercively created. Uh, and so, as you can see, big, big rise. It was something like 183,000 of those quarter of a million images were actually self-generated or coercively created uh, in, in, uh, images as well. And so predominantly 11 to 13-year-olds, which you can see there, but increasingly, which they concluded last year, 7 to 10-year-olds featuring in those self-generated images, a rise from 7,000 uh, individual images in 2020, uh, rising to uh, 27,000 in 2021. So massive cause for concern in terms of this big rise, and very much we would see that with this with the revenge porn help and the adults are in, encountering exactly the same thing as well. So some really really important work that uh, that goes on around the uh, the assessment, the analy the. Uh, the analysis of these particular images and getting these content taken down. As you can see, 0.15% of that content being just hosted in the UK, but we take action, I do have to take action on those on, on each of those um, uh, those images, wherever um, that they actually happen uh, to be on and, and, and report those, and also report those in through, uh, through the, the amazing In Hope network as well. So I uh, wanted to, to afford some time for, for questions. So I think we've only got five minutes or so question, uh, time for questions, Sabrina. Back over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. And uh, once again, I would like to thank um, all my colleagues um, and also the European Commission um, for sharing the very important work they're doing at national level. As I said, this is really this was these are really best practice example how these better Internet for uh, Plus strategy has been put into action, focusing on three pillars. Uh, child protection, child empowerment and child participation, which is of, at the core of the work that we are um, doing. Um, we still have some time for questions and we are really thrilled um, to open the floor now to hear your feedback and your questions. Thank you very much. You see two pictures of us from previous IGFs. We are usually on site uh, with you. It's uh, still a massive regret that this year didn't work out, but we hope to be back. Um, but I will just see with um, colleagues on site, um, Anna and Julia, to see if there are comments from our audience. And thank you for listening. Yes, do we have, yes, we have one comment or question. So maybe I will give you a microphone. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dauda. I'm from uh, Senegal, uh, West Africa. Uh, I do appreciate what you presented. It is very interesting. But I have a, have a, I have a problem. Uh, because you mentioned that this program is for European people. And we, we are facing the same problems on the internet. Threats are raising more and more. And we do need those programs in Africa. So my problem is how we can um, manage to implement them on in Africa, because I myself, r I'm running a, a, a non-profit in Senegal, and we are doing a lot of advocacy. We're doing a lot of raising awareness. We are educating kids, others, professionals on cybersecurity, and how they gonna uh, they can stay safe online. Okay, so this is very interesting, and um, we did more. Uh, recently, I was in Ivory Coast, and I created a very interesting game to educate kids and uh, on digital aspects and on cybersecurity too with some friends. Uh, maybe I will have the opportunity to share that game. We, we, we call it um, learn by playing. So uh, it is in uh, a local language in Ivory Coast, uh, Toleni Kalana, I don't know which language it is. So, uh, and we have more ideas uh, like, um, the, the materials that has been presented by Sofia. But we stuck. We stuck on funding. 
how we can implement those ideas. Even the game I'm talking about, how we can multiply it. So uh, this is very important for us. So this program needs to be uh, implemented in, in, in Africa. You're talking about uh, organizing the Safer Internet Day. Yeah, we can do it. But we still have some challenges. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Maybe you would like to address the qu this question. It's a pity Manuela Marta is not here. However, I think the main idea of this session was to share with you the resources that we have, but also there are lots of opportunities to join the effort within the Safe Internet Plus program. But also we are here to be able to, to cooperate and to find some solutions to, to, yeah, to bring us to the network closer and closer. Sabrina, maybe you would like to, to add something. Yes, thank you so much, um, Anna. I, I, I think um, what you mentioned is um, it's, it's really important. So, of course, this pre-event was just uh, an occasion for, for us to present uh, the work we're doing here in Europe. But as you have um, understood, is of course, um, this, this is a global concern. And um, why, of course, um, financially speaking, this is really important. Um, um, to 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 have to have funding um, and um, of course this is something that might be um, still lacking around the world but of course on occasions like the mentioned safer internet day we would be more than happy to collaborate with you to see what we can do and also the resources that have been presented to you these are all open resources um, for you to take into account for you to share um, at national level for you um, um, to translate uh, to localize. I think um, this is um, what we're trying. And of course, we are trying through events like the IGF to connect at a global level and try to find um, ways to help also organizations that, of course, we know how important um, funding mechanism mechanisms are. Um, of course, try to support as much as possible um, in those countries where there are not these funding frameworks in place yet. Um, as you have maybe also understood from the presentation, there are various different ways. Um, of course, the uh, funding coming by the European Commission is really valid and very important, but there are also other ways and um, colleagues on the call and um, also colleagues in the room have, I think, um, gave maybe some inspiration on collaborations they're doing also with um, national policymakers um, or um, industry partners. Um, so um, I think they, they might, this might have triggered some ideas, but we definitely would be happy to, to, to connect with you and also to see how we can support uh, putting um, yeah, efforts and work forward in Senegal. And most uh, importantly, um, we are very happy to um, give you and support your visibility of your action. Um, as you have seen, the Better Internet for Kids portal and Safer Internet Day allows us um, to also give visibility to the work that is happening at global level on this matter. Um, of course, I, um, if there are any of my colleagues on the call who would like to add, um, please feel free to do so. And if not, um, just to see if there are maybe any other comments or questions in the room. I know we are running a bit um, out of time. Yes, Sabrina, we have, uh, one, yes, we have one, one more. question. Okay. Okay, good, af good, af okay, good morning or good afternoon for everybody. Uh, my name is Peter Kim for the records in the national and safer internet coordinator in Liberia. We have been at the forefront of doing uh, hosting the safer internet day in Liberia regularly. I mean, it boils down also as it is, as he was saying, my brother from Senegal was saying that the level of funding or the need to fund or collaborate in terms of implementation. These are important in terms of how we want to create a platform to educate, to advocate, create awareness to our local people on the ground. So. I'm adding my voice to him as someone who was already taking the lead in terms of having more than four events of Safer Internet Day in Liberia. We do believe that it has been very struggling in terms of not waiting for funding, but then to implement based on the need that more people in Africa, the level of digital literacy is very low. But we believe that with the level of advancement in Europe, and you have brought this very good concept that for, for me, we have signed up to it. We are on the map in terms of the Safer Internet is mapped by INSAFE, and we have been recognized as uh, one of the hosts in Africa. And we believe that this is a very good initiative. The open source material we've been printing on our own and sharing it among students every year in February. The new core has come to us again. We're using this as a platform to appeal or to plead that, yes, it's taking place gradually, 
in you to be embraced and make sure that we can reach more people in our country in terms of you know, in the least developed country like Liberia and any other Af African country that need to replicate such a good program to ensure that we can have our kids and brothers and sisters safe online. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, it's uh, really good to hear that you are organized Safe Internet Day in your country because in the beginning it was organized only in Europe, but it crossed European uh, borders a long time ago. It is now organized in more than 100 uh, countries across the globe. So thank you very much. If there are any questions, yes, we have one more. If we, s yes, we still have some time. Um, hello, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I was wondering how you deal with the refugee children and their safety online, um, especially that their challenges can be sometimes different in Poland. People come from Chechnya and Ukraine and other regions, uh, and the mental health is already drained of very young people. So I don't know if there are elements to your uh, programs that address the situation, or are they addressed the same as everyone else? Thank you. Yes, <coughs> thank you for this question. Like from the very, very beginning, we hired uh, in our helplines. You learned a, a lot about the helplines, so we, we give support for all the mental issues, for all the issues coming uh, from the internet threats area. So we hired uh, Ukrainian experts because together with children, many other people came, like psychologists, uh, teachers, therapists, consultants. So we have now uh, in our helplines uh, people with uh, Ukrainian language uh, giving uh, kids support. And we also um, translated all the materials that we could within the last few months into Ukrainian. We uh, distribute them in schools. Uh, and to all, uh, all our events dedicated both to children and to teachers, we provide uh, Ukrainian translation. So we also we had lots of uh, teachers from Ukraine coming to our conferences, both online in and offline, and they uh, they get all the resources that they can use. But it's actually yeah, it's a very difficult situation right now, and we try to to search for support from all sides. We do what we can in the field of internet safety, at least. Yes, but we are we are also looking for some partners in Ukraine. For example, uh, during our uh, September conference, international international conference, keeping children and young people safe online. You have a partner from. We had a partner from uh, Kiev. Uh, it is a Ukrainian organization, Stop Sexting, and they promoted this conference uh, in Ukraine. In uh, Ukraine, and um, it was also uh, translated into uh, Ukrainian language. So we are doing what what we can. Uh, because needs are very, um, like, uh, high. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, there is a disruption for with me. I will speak in French. I, me, I, I am Jonas Cyril Jandé. I come from Ivory Coast. Je suis uh, manager program en charge du développement des programmes des médias sociaux. Uh, dans le cas de ma question, Je, nous, on est très intéressés par ce programme puisque chez nous, le ministère de la communication et de l'économie numérique qui est conduit par le ministre Amadou Koulobali lance un vaste programme qui concerne cette thématique-là. Cependant, j'aimerais bien comprendre. Chez, chez nous, en Afrique et particulièrement en Côte d'Ivoire, vous avez en, en moyenne 13 millions d'utilisateurs d'Internet. Euh, dans ces utilisateurs d'Internet, vous avez en moyenne 6 millions qui vont sur les médias sociaux. Donc de ceux qui vont sur les médias sociaux, 98% utilisent leur téléphone portable, mobile phone. Uh, 98% use a mobile phone to navigate on internet. Le problème, c'est que la majeure partie des parents qui donnent le téléphone portable aux enfants ou autres ne connaissent pas les conditions générales d'utilisation euh, d'internet les conditions générales d'utilisation. Donc vous vous retrouvez avec beaucoup d'adolescents qui sont utilisateurs d'Internet sans forcément connaître les conditions générales d'utilisation. Ma première question, c'est, dans le cadre de votre campagne chez vous, est-ce que vous avez connu cette problématique-là et comment vous avez réussi à sensibiliser pour pouvoir permettre aux parents de se rendre compte que 
une catégorie d'enfants n'ont pas droit à Internet ou n'ont pas droit aux médias sociaux. Deuxième problématique, c'est la problématique des signalisations sur les médias ou sur Internet ou sur les web TV à l'endroit des enfants. Euh, comment est-ce que vous avez réglé ces, cette problématique de signalisation sur les médias sociaux Afin que les images qui passent, chaque utilisateur puisse se rendre compte que telle image n'y est pas autorisée en fonction de son âge. Donc voilà les deux questions majeures que je souhaiterais poser. In, in French, and maybe Sabrina can deliver some translation here for the audience. I'm afraid I'm not that I cannot. <laughs> I cannot uh, translate and uh, deliver uh, my response in uh, French, and I we couldn't see the transcript, unfortunately, um, as well. So, if um, you could maybe um, repeat the question, I understood something. How we are informing the parents about the social media use of their children, if that is correct. Uh, but I think that we have uh, uh, support a translator yeah. in the room. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Make okay, it more so clear. I'm not really great at translating, and I hope it's fine if I answer <laughs> in English because my French kind of uh, sucks uh, when I speak. <laughs> but um, I'm too. also a big youth ambassador. You heard a lot about uh, Better Internet for Kids, so maybe I just try my best. So by educating parents, we sometimes also try to do that via the young people. So that kind of like the people who are ac actively using it and we learn a lot about the, the problems and we try to also reach the parents via the schools. So um, yeah, just try to have the, the students teach their parents as well. <laughs> so that is like one thing we are uh, actively trying to do because yeah, what you said is like a really big problem, but we see also from like the work we're doing, especially like in Germany that some of the parents they kind of when like their children turn 14 they kind of stop caring so much about what they are doing online because they say yeah i really don't understand what they are doing so yeah just do whatever you want and that's yeah something we try to sensibilize them so i hope this kind of <laughs> answered your question Thank you very much for your help. I, I think that here on site we have to finish because there will be an, an another session just in a few minutes. So from our side, uh, on site uh, people here, we are really thankful that you are all gathered here in such a big group. Thank you for your p participation. And Yes. And thank you so much from us as well. Uh, it was lovely um, interacting with you and uh, wish you a um, fruitful uh, continuation of the conference and STs. We are hosting two workshops uh, tomorrow, uh, one on um, online gender-based violence and one on disinformation. So I hope you uh, join us again to continue um, the discussion. Thank you very much.